Jones thinks the ball must have been incomplete because sure. he kind of stops. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was disbelief, and they gave up on it. So BC will get the football for the first time here tonight, down seven to nothing. And that means Dennis Grossell to go to work. In fact, he got his first career start two years ago against NC State and got the win. 6 1, about 220 out of Ohio. Passed for over 300 yards in the loss at Clemson, Tim, but he did not play a good game. He was intercepted two times and fumbled on the last play. Really, the difference in the football game, in my opinion, he's had his moments. You know, last year against Virginia, threw for all kinds of yards. You know, over 300 against Clemson, nothing wrong with that, but he's got to eliminate the turnovers. As the talented Garwin in the backfield, but that one should have been caught. That was Jaden Williams right off the hands. Right, his kitchen. And that can't happen for Boston College. Dennis Grossell needs the guys around him to play better. And, and Williams, who they think is going to be a star here at BC, is wide open on the end cut. It's a nice play call. Ball's right there, catch and run opportunity, and he just drops the football. Be careful, of course, with the secondary for NC State. As a defense, they have picked off the football seven times. Second down and 10, he wants to go to the air again. And Lewis gets stuck. C.J. Lewis with the catch, but Pitts there to say hello, and that gains only one yard. Yeah, and Derek Pitts makes a nice play. The transfer from West Virginia, or Marshall, he's from West Virginia. You know, he knows Tony Gibson's system, does a nice job there on Gill. And Boston College, first two plays of the game, come out throwing the football, probably trying to get their quarterback in a rhythm. But look at how good the Wolfpack has been, forcing three and outs. 49% of the time. Number three in FBS. Third and nine. Grossell moving those feet, dumps it off short, and they're going to pick up that first down and a whole lot more on a big, big carry here after the catch by Levy. And goes for 27. Finally bottled up by Boykin, but a big gain. It's a fantastic job by Dennis Grissel. He's looking to get a corner out to his right. Doesn't like it. And doesn't move into trouble. Does a nice job of navigating the pocket. And then he finds Levy. Sometimes a check down on third and long with the underneath coverage playing so soft can turn into big plays like it does there. Where's Boston College with the loss of their star quarterback? Jerkovic, they felt that in that defeat at Clemson certainly is out for the year with a hand injury. He's got a huge hole as he barrels ahead and a nice gain of eight. For Pat Garwo had 175 yards, two touchdowns, and a great win against Missouri here. Yeah, he's a tough runner. And check this out. This is Zay Flowers, their star wide receiver. Look at him on this split zone play, kicking out on a linebacker. Dave, you said at the top of the, sh the game, this is going to be a tough football game. You know, put your mouthpiece in, buckle your chin strap. Well, how about that for your star wide receiver blocking a linebacker in the run game? You mentioned it. Tyler Brabel is out along that offensive line. And it's going to be picked up. And on the run, Grossell is going to take the sideline and scamper out. And he'll scoop it, pick up 10. That's a bad sign for North Carolina State. Quarterback fumbles a snap. He picks up the football and runs for 10 yards. Like that, those are the types of things. You're a good team. You're a ranked team inside the top 25 like NC State is. Like plays like that, when teams make mistakes, you need to be able to capitalize on it. Wolfpack coming in, number 22. Man in motion is Flowers. Grossell gets it to him on the near side. He evades a couple of tacklers. He can certainly do that. He can break some ankles with his footwork, and that'll gain just three. He sure can. Look at the move he puts on Tanner Engel, who has been described to us as a human missile, the way he likes to run around and tackle. And Zay Flowers, a guy that just needs to touch the football as much as possible for Boston College. Dave Doran even said, you know, they typically don't get players the caliber of number four. And I think he's right. His 24th reception has a couple of touchdowns this season. Going to stay on the ground. And look at that burst of speed and power. Out of Garwo, he's taken down close to the five-yard line. Big first down and a crunching hit. He really stuck it to Drake Thomas. 
And White will miss the tackle. <laughs> hey, you might need to buckle two chin straps to play in this football game because Pat Garbo isn't trying to run around anybody as he just runs over Aiden White, the freshman corner. First and goal, it's Garwo trying to get off to the right side, but they snuffed that one out quickly. Jakeem Harris, sophomore out of Savannah, Georgia, there to meet him, and they're going to lose a yard. Now Boston College with the rain beginning to fall again. Garwo in the backfield, they want to go quickly. Little play action. Now on the move. The quarterback will loft that one to the end zone, and he just threw it out. With the pressure on him, good pressure by Pitts again. You know, in BC, trying to use tempo with big people down inside the 10 yard line, probably expecting to get man coverage, get some type of pressure look. Instead, NC State plays soft, nowhere to go with the football, and got to throw it away now, third and goal. From the eight yard line. On third down, firing for the end zone, and a touchdown! Right into the hands of Big Trey Berry, the 6-6 tight end for six. Trey Berry has been a really nice find for Boston College. Grab transfer, you mentioned Dave, is a big target. And he was working on a six foot one linebacker, Jalen Scott. And the ACC shakes a little bit because Boston College may have found another big time tight end. Trey Berry's been big lately. He's been big. The running game's been big because it's Pat Garwo running over defenders and then a great job of getting your body inside by Trey Berry. Boston College ties it up. and they were on that drive, which was 10 plays, 75 yards. Yeah, it sounds like most of the student section has, has heard Jeff Halfley's call for, hey, come enjoy this environment. You didn't get to do that a year ago. And I think he understands as he has been trying to build back this Boston College football program. There are things outside of just coaching X's and O's that he can attack to try to make this experience better. And for more on that, let's get out of Kelsey. Well, guys, you talked to the players about what it means to have an atmosphere like this, and they definitely felt it after the Missouri game and the storming of the field, and it gave them some extra energy. You're also talking right now about Jeff Halfley and him pleading to the students to come out early. The first thing he did when he ran out of the tunnel was look right across the field, right underneath where you guys are sitting. The whole lower bowl section is full. He went over there and got the crowd amped up and is excited to see him all here. Were the fans rushing to field when you were playing I, here? I thought they weren't, and I thought that he was trying to get us pumped up, Dave. I, he ran right, <laughs> I thought that he was coming towards us. No? I think we, we were already there. <laughs> NC State trying to get to the center of the line in a big pile, a two-yard gain. And a stop by Isaiah Henderson out of Brooklyn, New York. And by the way, BC leads the all-time series 10-7. It began way back in 1936 when BC won the first meeting. It was played at Fenway Park, 7-3. It was a baseball score. It was three years before Ted Williams appeared on the scene for the Red Sox. What a big day in the American League Championship Series. Second down and eight. Tied 7-7 here in the first. And the carry will be Ricky Person this time. And they're going to find him pretty quickly. Nowhere to run there. Person taken out by Brandon Barlow, the fifth-year man. And a loss of a yard. Yeah, and Barlow does a good job. Just look at him kind of set the edge, get outside. And, and then everybody is running to the football for BC. And... Defensively, a lot of energy so far from the Eagles. Brings up third down and eight for the Wolfpack. So some pressure on Devin Leary to answer. He's got person in the backfield with him. And let's see what he has cooked up here on third down. Looking to throw and a long one and a catch. Right along that sideline, and an outstanding grab. 
And Mezzi, was he in bounds? And they're going to say now, no, he was not. Oh, I'm not well, so sure. It looks like it's, it's the re-catch. He doesn't catch it the mm. first time. If he would have catch, caught it initially, like right there, then yes. I think he had a chance. But because of the re-grip, yep. he's out of bounds. And Brandon Sebastian, I will say, has been a guy that's been tried a few times. And he has risen to the occasion for BC playing corner. Yeah, he's done he, it before, too. He had a game ceiling pick in overtime against Missouri. Yeah, and he, he's a guy that played a lot of press man coverage. And you're going to get tested when you do that. He delivers. So Gil the punt. And got up a long one here. Driving back, Levy as it takes a hop inside the 10. He's going to down it, try to come out. Made the catch and then scampered out. 65 yard punt by Trenton Gill, the ACC leader coming in at 46.3. Well, I was going to say, you know, he's quite a weapon. As we talk about how good NC State's defense has been, and, and really think about how efficient Devin Leary's been. It's easy to forget and kind of leave out what they've done on special teams, but that was an absolute missile right there. And you know, now has BC backed up. So first down 10 for the Eagles. And a long way to go with Garwold, the running back. He'll take the hand up. Big hole. He's across the 20. He avoids another tackler across the 30-yard line. Not a big gainer. Finally, Jalen Scott with the stop, but it's a 20-yard scamper. And this is what happens when big backs get going. It's blocked really well up front. You get into the second level. And guess what? That's Aiden White, who got run over on the previous drive. A little less eager to go stick his face mask in there, and then there's Garwo getting behind him. First down, once again, it'll be Garwa reversing field. They're going to drag him down. So no gain there. Tanner Engel with the tackle. Let me talk about the fact that the pack is looking to maintain that excellence on defense despite some big losses. Peyton Wilson is out. Cyrus Fagan is out. Linebacker and strong safeties both out for the season. They also had lost the nose tackle C.J. Clark. They've been able to overcome that. To this point in the season, Grossell running away from some pressure and off the fingertips of Zay Flowers. He could not hang on. We're tied 7 7. You think about this for BC. That's the second receiver drop that we've seen. You know, first it was Williams, then there, Zay Flowers. We've seen Grossell fumble a snap. Garwo just put the ball on the turf. And so Boston College. I think is flirting with disaster a little bit with how they're handling the football. Third and ten, and that wind is really a factor, really whipping up here in the first quarter. On third and ten, and blown dead. A flag down at about the 32 yard line. Ball start. Offense, number 64. Five yard penalty, third down. Ben Petrula, remember that outstanding offensive line. I think a lot of people in the ACC believe these are the two best O lines head to head tonight. Yeah, I would agree with that statement because it's not just one guy, it's the collective group across the board. And honestly, even when somebody gets hurt, the next guy that can come fill in. Third down 15 for Grossell. Good time to throw. Rifles that pass, and it's going to be caught for a first down. And a big catch by Jalen Gill, the Ohio State transfer. This is Frank Signetti, offensive coordinator for Boston College. Just having confidence in a quarterback that struggled two weeks ago because here's an in cut in the rain in the wind a ball he struggled throwing two weeks ago at Clemson and Grossell with a strike to Gill for a big first down conversion 18 yards moving the football here Gill has been a little bit underutilized only his fifth reception that may change here tonight some play action Grossell throwing again 
And it's going to be incomplete. Intended for Jaden Williams, the talented freshman. And it's another opportunity. Here's what's going on. Boston College clearly is trying to get opportunities for Williams because he's just so talented. They think that he can kind of be similar to Zay Flowers. And an in cut earlier to start the game. And then that one there is a perfect throw by Grossell. Catch and run opportunities too. And with his speed, who knows what happens? But that's the second drop for the young freshman. Yeah, he's caught 10 passes, three of them for touchdowns this season. They stay on the ground and tripped up. It's going to be Alex Sinkfield and stopped by Isaiah Moore, who had a great game against Clemson for NC State. Wearing that number one again, very special for the Wolfpack. You've got to be a special player to be honored to wear it. And that's why when they talk about their defense, they describe him as the heartbeat of their D. And, you know, with the season-ending injury to Peyton Wilson, their linebacking crew, I think, was looking for a bit of a new leader, and they definitely have it in Isaiah Moore. A big call at the 45. And here come the Wolfpack. He's going to unload it. A lot of contact there, and the flag is down. That'll be interference. Williams drawing that penalty on Pitts. And an easy flag to drop in a 7-7 game here in the first. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. As mentioned on Derek Pitts. Well, here's the deal. It's all out blitz. Here comes the come the safeties from depth, which means it's man-to-man -man coverage everywhere with no help anywhere else on the field. And so it's a good job of Dennis Grossell recognizing it and going back to Jalen Williams, a player with a ton of speed, giving him a chance. He draws the P.I. First down 10 and flags again. A fairly high number of penalties early. Ball start. Offense, number 81, five-yard penalty, first down. So BC to back up as they bid for their fifth win of the season. They're in homecoming. And, of course, when they did lose to Clemson, they were coming off that very emotional victory over Missouri in overtime. And they were backing up Clemson, backing them up, backing them up until that last second turnover. It cost them a chance. Rosella roll and fire, and he is going to hit his man, gets a receiver open, and that's going to be just a two yard gain. They pick it up to Witter for a quick hitter. Yeah, and I think that he's actually throwing this ball to Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is out on the flat, and then you have that slide route by Witter. See how he's going to go reach for it? I actually think he was throwing it to, yes. to Flowers, but Witter, a big guy with a good wingspan, and Picks I think the coach is like, look, we'd rather four have it than, than 81. Rather right? four <laughs> have it than anybody else on the field. We thought we made that clear. <laughs> Second down 13. Grossell going short and caught by Garwo. Garwo can't really get anywhere. Dragged down by Drake Thomas. You know, Dave Doran's been a little bit frustrated on the sideline because there's been, you know, three third and longs that Boston College has been in tonight and you see Grossell on third down whether it was the penalty or a big pickup on an in cut you know this is really where NC State's trying to get you is these third and long situations try to blitz your protection but Boston College has handled it well so far and where NC State has been as good as anybody in the country so far this season Third and ten pressure. He gets away somehow, still on his feet. A flag down as he is taken down, but there is a flag dropped again. And Grossell, a little bit of a Houdini act there. Only winds up losing yards. Holding. Offense number 77. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. And yeah, that went against the guard, Zion Johnson. And decline, fourth down and 15. And the punting unit on for Boston College. You think about it for BC, you know, a couple of false starts, a holding penalty, some drops. It's been a sloppy start offensively for them. And 
I, I really think that, you know, when playing in your own building, those are the types of things you're not expecting to happen. Oh, BC able to down that right around the one and a half yard line. The long drive coming up here potentially for the Wolfpack. Be taken over as a long way to go here. First and 10. 7 7 game. And a flag dropped again. We have had a bevy of those here in the first quarter. All start. Offense. Number 88. Belgius has the distance to the goal. First step. It's a big two inch penalty, Dave. Huge. <laughs> 2.37 left in the quarter. Leary has a lot of friends and family in the stands. He's a Northeast kid out of New Jersey. Keeping it on the ground. They stack him up very close to the goal line and push him back. And into the end zone. Forward progress here. And a stop by De Palma. Van Knight with the carry. And was able to advance it one yard. It's a bad feeling for a quarterback to be standing back in your own end zone and you're just trying to create some room. I mean, the idea is at a minimum, get a first down so you can punt. And that's really the objective sometimes when you're backed up. Knight to carry again. Slightly larger hole this time, but really not much. Straight on to Palma. Meets him once again, a two yard game. Yeah, and Boston College actually played a little bit of coverage there, which you know they haven't typically been doing. They've been playing press man, cover one, challenging the receivers. Played a little bit softer that last play on second down. I'd expect them to do the same here on third and seven. So very large early call here for the Wolfpack. Backed up inside their own five yard line. He'll want to throw it. He gets that out short. And Thomas trying to scoot ahead, but only made it to the five. And that shows Ricky Person and Josh DeBerry, the man to stop him a one yard gain, and they're going to be forced to punt. And yeah, Boston College, I just mentioned they playing so much man coverage. They actually jump out of it and play zone there. And because you know, you're throwing a little bit of a wide route to person. So many defenders with their eyes on the football able to rally and make the play. Levy back at the 40 yard line for the Eagles. And Gill gets this one pretty short. That will take a hop. And across the 50 yard line, it'll be down after what turned out with the bounce to be a 51 yard punt. Coke Zero Sugar and Wendy's are proud supporters of college football. Best combo ever. Great to have you with us here at Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, number 22 NC State, and Boston College. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, and Kelsey Riggs with you tonight. Tied up 7 7, last 31 seconds of the first quarter. And Boston College back to work in good field position. Rossell has had a couple of drops here in the first quarter. Actually, three all together. On the pitch. They're going to keep it on the ground. That's Garwo with the carry, but nothing doing there. You know, I think it's important for Boston College to stay on schedule. We've seen them with a couple of false starts, end up in third and long, and truthfully, it's just not where they want to live. That's not how their team is built. I think you know, just doing more things to stay on schedule to have manageable third downs is really, I'm sure, what they're going to talk about the break here after the first quarter. And that is the end of the first. Some fireworks in this one ties 7 7. Seen a good one. Physical football game. And I think it's low to the class of 2020 at BC on the big board because, of course, nobody could say hello to them last year. There was nobody here. It was almost like a standing ovation to recognize them. Like, sorry, you had to. <laughs> yes. That was your senior year. Yes, they got a rousing ovation. So the Eagles on the move. Garwo with a little bump. Nobody took him down on the first hit. They do on the second. And he'll gain just one yard. Going a long way for that. Drake Thomas with the tackle. A few times where we've seen Garwo have to reverse field after getting mm -hmm. bobbled up, bottled up. And 
that's really not his game. His game is getting downhill, being a physical runner, running through arm tackles. And you know, I think NC State's done a good job of kind of stopping that initial momentum. Replaced now in the backfield by Travis Levy. The graduate out of Maryland. Third down and nine. Rossell winding up might have been tipped and it's incomplete and out. Indeed a tipped pass. So fourth down and nine. Yeah. You just see the the pressure inside the pocket because Flowers kind of running a comeback there does a good job of getting separation and he's wondering where is the football but here's the pressure they're coming on a blitz and you just see Grossell kind of not able to follow through with the football as that pocket just collapsed. So Carlson on the punt. And Thayer Thomas, one of the best in the ACC at returning them, planted back at the 10 yard line for the Wolfpack. And a 7 7 game, early seconds of the second quarter. And he will launch this one. And will drop down and into the end zone. 50 yarder. So the offense back on the attack. Icky Iguano, the left tackle, our Geico player spotlight. One ACC coach said he's got that thing you cannot teach. Well, he's nasty. He's athletic. He's big. You know, he played guard for part of his career. He's played tackle. He's playing tackle now. Mal Kuyper Jr. has him rated as the number one guard prospect, but he's a really good player, and both teams recognize it. In fact, Tim Le Lebuku basically said look I tried to hide some of his blocks that yeah. I'll take from my defensive player some of the pancakes <laughs> trying to eliminate those but it's tough to do there's so many of them they will stay on the ground here on the carry off to that near side it's person and kind of tugging at that leg a little bit but that's a pad issue hey, hey well guess who's leading the way look at the big fella icky are you Elijah Jones is like nah man like hey I don't want any of that I certainly don't want to end up on your your pancake reel person trying to pick his way through the line did a nice job finding a hole there as he dives ahead and we'll pick up five yards Josh DeBerry will get the tackle and, and we've seen this day the left side even though Chandler Zavala who is out for this game who's their typical starting left guard Dylan McMahon will slide over to left guard and they want to run the football left with Iquanu over there. McMahon now at left guard and Grant Gibson, a very athletic center in the middle. Yeah, Gibson's outstanding, one of the country's best. Iquanu's going to be an All-American. You could write that down. Nowhere to run on that carry, however. In fact, they will get nothing or close to it on the carry by Person. And it was three straight runs to the left side and as a Raku, who's a nice player, a freshman, he's been active for them. He's a good job of fighting through contact, and he's, he's a good-looking young player for BC. Third down five. The rain has been off and on. That's probably going to be the case all night long. Although the wind has been pretty fierce. Empty backfield here. Larry facing third and five. And a timeout. Timeout. North Carolina State. It seemed like the respect was sincere and genuine from both guys. Larry Short. It's Person. Person with some room to operate down that sideline as he picks up the first down and plenty more. A 15 yard gain. Chased out by DeBerry. That's a really cool play call. They're going to move the back, and when they move the back, Salai ends up being in coverage, and he just gets lost. He basically needs to peel with the back, and he doesn't. And so DeBerry ends up just reacting and then trying to make on, make a play on Person, but nice play call. Person, good hands, obviously great wheels. Now the Sherman's going to be dropped and scooped up. That's Carter able to retain a nine-yard gain, but he dropped it initially after making the catch. Kind of a weird play. Almost had to look for a second. Did he catch it? And he, and he does. It's an RPO. Larry gets to him late. 
it's almost like he never really secures the football for a guy who makes a great catch earlier in the night. Gonna put that one in harm's way. Brings up second down and one. And let's see what they're doing here. Taking a look. The rolling on the field was a catch, then a fumble recovered by NC State. And that play is under further review. So what do you think? I mean, looking at it again, did he have possession? Seeing it live, I thought he caught it and fumbled it, which is the call on the field. Not sure that ball is ever put away. Athletic policyholders. By the way, on a review, so it was incomplete. Knight with the carry, but can't get much. He'll pick up one hard-earned yard there. You know, it's interesting that, you know, to go back to that catch. The ball just never seemed like it was put away, and so they overturn it, and now... Flag down. Oh. A lot of penalties in this one. I know that Dave Dorn made a point of bringing in officials to throw flags during his practices in the spring and again the later workouts in the summer trying to cut down the penalties that's worked after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct number 52 on the offense the down will count and it's a 15 yard penalty third down it's on the offensive lineman Timothy McKay 6'4 300 pound freshman out of Raleigh and I didn't see it, but I, I saw the flag late. And, you know, McKay, who rotates in at tackle, they've been moving guys around. And now all of a sudden, third and 10, which, you know, you have a chance to convert. Now you end up in third and 24. And there isn't really a play call for third and 24. 11 minutes to go before halftime. The BC faithful. Trying to make a difference here tonight. And here's Larry back to throw. Good time. Off the hand of Person. He was open. But incomplete. And so the Wolfpack will have to punt with 10.54 left here in the first half. And you, know, you just get the sense that you know the longer Boston College is right there with a team like NC State, the more their confidence grows. We saw it when they played Clemson. Like they, because they're striking distance and the way they're coached, there's just a confidence about them that they feel like they can get it done. And I think that you know NC State continuing to have you know penalties like that or you know not being able to convert on third downs. Mm -hmm. It is, it's like energizing the student section. I think it's energizing the Boston College sideline. I like Coach Rick had the perfect comment right after that Clemson game, BC Clemson. He said, you got cheated. As a fan, you got cheated not to see an ending to that game, like, you know, a tip pass, an interception, or a touchdown pass. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. You know, that the 11-yard line and don't field the snap, that obviously wasn't the ending that you know, I think anybody wanted to see other than a Clemson fan, but they're hanging around. On the handoff, it's Sinkfield. Sinkfield has open field across the 30. And he is pushed to the sideline after a nice game. Talk about a burst of speed for 22 yards. Alex Sinkfield. Well, he's just coming off a of left tackle here, and they do a good job of caving it all down. And it's just... It's a really good job of, of, of sliding up inside there, and then good speed by Sinkfield. And all of these Boston College running backs, I think, have great patience and great vision. And I think it's because they trust their offensive line so much, and you can see why. Flowers in motion. Sinkfield again. Big time carry. Another healthy gain. This goes for 26 yards. Jalen Scott. This time, yeah, it's Zion Johnson who's going to pull from here and get a block. And you know, this is essentially, you know, power football. Block down, pull a guard around. It's a good job. And he's not touched until he gets into the secondary. And, you know, Boston College, you make this type of, you'll get this type of movement running the football. NC State's going to have to come up with some type of response to get somebody else involved in the run game. Seafield staying low to the ground. They want him to run it again. He's 5'9". 
about 205 from Boynton Beach Florida. And for more on the running backs we toss it down to Kelsey. Well guys I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of these Boston College players about the run game and when you ask them about the running game every single one of them lights up. Dennis Grossell says these guys had a chip on their shoulder last year that they didn't meet the expectations that they had for themselves and you're seeing it pay in dividends this year. He also says it's not the other running back it's another one no matter who's in. Second down nine. And this time it's Garwo and will run it. How about Grossell, by the way, throwing the football? Seven completions to seven different receivers. They're really mixing it up. Yeah, they're spreading the football around. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, to, to kind of just finish up on Kelsey's point, BC really didn't run the football well a year ago, which I think is surprising. They had good backs and, you know, obviously Phil Dracovic and more explosive offensively, but they wanted to get back to more balance. They've done that even prior to the Grossell injury. And it really is kind of what they should do based on the makeup of their football team. Now whistles here and a timeout. Wolf timeout. NC State. NC Second State of this half. will take number two, 815 to go in the living in third and long tonight, which is probably you know creating massive headaches for both Tim Beck and Frank Signetti. I run out of their third and long calls already at this point in the game. Well, you got the distinct feeling this week as that one's bobbled a bit, but he recovered. He fires in and a great catch. Outstanding play by Jalen Gill. And we'll pick up the first down. Got the feeling, talking to the NC State coaches, they wanted to force Grossell to throw the football. Yeah, and he's thrown it well. That one's bobbled. Doesn't even have the laces. Able to get the ball out. Perfect location for Gill because Tyler Baker Williams. He's a really fine player. Had excellent coverage. So Grossell, 8 out of 13, 72 yards and a touchdown. And on play action, he's going to run and lob that one out with pressure. And NC State on the chase. That was Jalen Scott. 6'1", 245 pounder from Shelby, North Carolina. And Boston College was trying to shot play first down, make it look like run, and try to create an opportunity for either C.J. Lewis or Zay Flowers down the field, and NC State wasn't falling for it. Alex Sinkfield is the back. He has churned some tremendous runs already. Flowers in motion. Pass over the middle, and it's going to be jarred loose and incomplete. C.J. Will uh, Lewis there, and took the hit. Devin Boykin, the man to lay it on him. Yeah, Boykin, the freshman safety, does an excellent job there. C.J. Lewis is coming in. He's open. Ball's on a good location. Does an excellent job keeping his head out of the play. Good job with his shoulder. He's well done. And a flag down. It's going to be roughing the passer here. So big, big call. Take a look. Oh man. That is Daniel Joseph, the linebacker. Yeah, and he's roughing the passer. It's got to be forcible contact. If we can look at it again, but that, like to me, that does not look like forcible contact. Not at all. To a quarterback. Moves it to the 21 yard line. And a handoff Sinkfield straight ahead. And a dive for four yards on that gain. Jalen Scott stops him. Tied 7 7. And up BC's got a little bit of life here because of that roughing play. And, you know, good run on, on first down. You know, I would expect Boston College to run and move the pocket play. Try to give them a chance for another goal to goal situation like they had earlier in the first quarter. Let's see if Sinkfield gets another touch. Flowers on the move. Such a dangerous wide receiver. Sinkfield again, right to the center of the line. And taken down at the 15. So third and three. This is where I think a move the pocket play. You know, 
when you identify the things that Dennis Grossell has done well. It's when the ball comes out quickly or you can get him on the move. And you know, third and three, you could run the football, but I would expect some type of boot or naked to get Grossell on the move. Well, you called it. Looking for the end zone. Has a man knocked free out of the back of the end zone off the hands of Trey Barry. Boykin made a tremendous play. Devin Boykin knocked it away. Two incredible plays by Boykin. In the last four plays, first the play in the end cut, and then Trey Barry is wide open. It's a great play call by Frank Signetti. Move the pocket play. You know, play action basically fake to the left, roll out to the right, and Barry's open. Got to get the ball to him, and the ball just hangs up a bit. And look at Boykin. Never looks back to the football, but reads the receiver's eyes and hands and then finishes violently through the football. That's a heck of a play. Connor Litton on the freshman for a 32-yard field goal attempt. And that is up, and that is no good. He cannot connect. What a play by Boykin. The strong safety saving a touchdown. We're tied 7-7. But tonight, although they should be celebrating a touchdown, I'm sure they all believe. Tremendous breakup on the last play by the strong safety for the Wolfpack. Devin Boykin out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Just a tremendous play. It was an outstanding play, and then you factor in the missed field goal, and you know, NC State kind of dodges a bullet. So working from the 20-yard line, Bam Knight tied up as he pushed it across the 20. He gains two on that carry. And when they last met, it was 2019 right here on the hill. And Boston College won that 45 to 24. A.J. Dillon rushing for 223 yards and three touchdowns. Dave Doran said, look, last time I played there, we got embarrassed. I mean, it sounded like he was bothered by it. It's just kind of uncharacteristic of his tough, hard-nosed football teams kind of get handled the way they did in that matchup. Larry on some play action. It's going to be knocked out of the hands of the wide receiver. That was Porter Rooks. Off the hands, busted up by Matry. Yeah, Matry there for the play. Good pressure coming off the edge. Looks like Josh DeBerry coming off the edge, and then Matry there. That's good, fast, physical defense. And Rooks, Porter Rooks, a player that NC State is really excited about. Ton of upside, speed, talent, dynamic player. The BC there ready for it. And Jeff Hapley wanted his crowd. Here at BC, they have shown up. Third down eight. Tied 7-7. Leary, time in the pocket. Dumps it short. And a completed pass. And they're going to pick up yardage there. It's Carter with the carry after the catch. And that's a first down. And basically what NC State has done is said, look, if you're going to play all this man, we're going to run all these crossing routes. Now it ends up being zone, but the zone is so soft that Leary is basically able to just find Carter right away on a shallow cross, and he's able to run for the first down. Devin Carter's been a very key target here. Does have a couple of touchdown passes coming into the game. There he gets away from a tackler. Good athletic play as he slings it for another first down. The catch by Toodle. Christopher Toodle, his first. It goes for 16. And that play was all out of sorts from the from the snap. Backs and fakes going the wrong way. And Toodle just a good job of working for his quarterback. First down 10. Leary. Once again, gets the pass free, hits Bam Knight. Got the nickname Bam from an uncle when Zonovan was just a toddler. He was still in his playpen. Loved to bang his toys incessantly. And his uncle said, all you hear is Bam, Bam, Bam. And it stuck. Fits well on the football <laughs> he, he field, plays too. He football, too. Yes, he does. Very hard-nosed. Second down and six. Larry 8 for 12, 104 yards and a touchdown so far. Under four minutes to go before the break. On the ground again, it's Knight. Knight cutting back inside. Gains some extra. In fact, picks up a seven. Cam Arnold finally wrapping him up. 
you know, we mentioned it earlier, they like to run left, and Boston College knows it now. They're getting bodies to the left in the run game, but just like Boston College's running backs, you know, having vision and patience, Bam Knight, you know, doesn't run blind, does a good job there of being patient, being able to cut it back. The offense has been varied under Tim Beck. Leads the conference in time of possession, 32 minutes per game they keep the football. A good fake, but it's going to be incomplete. Incomplete pass and intended for Thayer Thomas. Yeah, Devin Leary is just too slow on the RPO. I think he ends up making a bad decision. And because of that, Valdez is in his lap. You know, if you're quicker with that decision, then Valdez is still trying to decipher run or pass and the ball can come out and get there to Thayer Thomas, but kind of hesitated on the decision, which allows Valdez to get to him. Yeah. That's why the ball was batted. Got the tip. Knight staying on his feet, still driving. Took a lot of effort to bring him down, a pickup of two yards on that carry. Isaiah Graham Obley, a Temple transfer, leaves him with 36 tackles with another stop. Yeah. Graham Mobley flies around and you know you also are getting great effort you know out of the defensive front and it's Valdez again and then you know, Boston College has done a good job of teaching their players about punching at the football created a bunch of turnovers that way and trying to get it out there on second down you key call third and eight trying to keep the drive alive Thomas out to the right Larry throws, goes short once again, and out close to the 30-yard line. That was Toodle with his second catch on the drive. He will gain seven. And again, it's crossing routes. Look at these guys just all crossing, trying to get meshes and rubs, and basically what happens is it forces Woodby to run over one of his own guys on top of him, which creates the separation. It's a nice job of, of having a plan by Tim Beck to attack this press man coverage in a different way. Fourth and one. NC State to go for it. And another timeout. Boston College. Timeout. Boston College. First of this half. And coming up on the PNC Bank halftime report with Jordan, Eric, EJ, and the coach. We get you up to date on all of the college football in the ACC today, how about Pitt? And right now controlling the Coastal and a wild finish in Chapel Hill today. The Chapel Hill finish was crazy, an interception, you know, to, to seal it at the end, and then Pitt controlling. Look, we're in Blacksburg. That's a hard environment to go into and win, and Pitt really had control of that game the entire time. That's an impressive performance. You know, really wasn't competitive for much of the game because they were able to get out to an early lead. You know, a couple of schools we really want to see very soon. Wake Forest mm -hmm. and Pitt. Want to get a first-hand look at them in the conference. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Band nine to backfield on fourth and one for the Wolfpack. Try to keep this alive. Inside the last two minutes of the first half here at Boston College. And on a handoff, he will get plenty. And Zonovan Bam Knight will pick up the first down, a six-yard gain. It's a good push by the guys up front. Basically, it ends up being, you know, a, a zone blocking scheme. You see everybody moving to the right with a kick out coming from the other side. It's Trent Penix kicking out. That's split zone. You know, so you're basically digging out to the right, and then you've got a kick out to the other side. And it's a good job of getting your shoulders inside by person and off it'll be night again night staying up still staying up to have it across that 20 yard line for a seven yard gain as a Henderson eventually with the tackle so second down and three they continue to move the football a couple of missed tackles there yeah and I think that NC State has starting to get into a bit of, bit of a rhythm running the football their guys up front continuing to come off and this happened against Louisiana Tech. Didn't run the ball great early on in the football game, but got better as the game went on. Person the running back, they like to throw it on two. Second down and three, he's gonna run it. Big hole, 
Dragging some tacklers with him. Very tough to bring down. He picks up a first down with an eight yard carry. TJ Ram eventually with the stop, but a first down. And a timeout. 42 seconds to go. And NC State, a strong drive. Boston College. And not a lot of touchdown in the second quarter this season, at least not yet. Well, they're about to be tried right here. And you know, with 42 seconds left on the clock, I think there's a lot of options, especially with the timeouts. You know, gone. You know, you've got to be careful in terms of where you throw the football, but you don't have to work the sideline with this type of clock. And you know, I think with the, the stoppage of play here, could easily be a scenario where you're talking about not just the play you're going to run here, but maybe the next two plays and potentially three plays that you may end up running. And NC State has used their timeouts for the half. 42 seconds to go, and a ball. Spotted at the 11 yard line. And Ricky Person will remain in the backfield with the quarterback, Devin Leary. Now to Timber Creek High School in New Jersey. He finished as that school's all time passing leader. In fact, state of New Jersey's all time passing leader. He's going to roll. He's going to fire through the end zone. And incomplete. And Mezzi was the intended receiver, but. He threw it over everybody. Yeah, it's a smart decision by Leary because it's a rollout. I think they're expecting man coverage. They're expecting the outside corner to chase and then get the corner from the inside receiver open near that back pylon. It's not there. Go ahead and throw it away. Don't waste too much time. That's still a lot at your disposal if you're North Carolina State offensively with more than 30 seconds left. Second down 10. Toodle on the move. There he takes the snap. Looking for that end zone. Finds a receiver. It is caught and it's going to be fumbled. And they're going to say incomplete. Incomplete. Emezi lost it. And a big time hit by Matry. It's a huge hit by Matry. Amezi looks like he catches the football and starts up the field with it. Two feet down, secure. I mean, he tucks the football. Ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is under further review. I'm with you, Tim. I thought he had it. That's a catch and fumble and a recovery by Rom my opinion it's a nice job of Leary he gets through his progression of Mezzi is number three in the progression gets back to him Mezzi catches the football gets his shoulders turned to run up the field after tucking it away I believe that's a catch fumble which would make the play by Matry an outstanding play one rivaling mm. the play that we saw Boykin make on Trey Berry on the other end those North are Carolina State. All the looks that we can show you. And as you said, it looked like he had tucked the football when a hit came and lost it. I certainly thought it was a fumble initially. But they're taking a look. The play is under review. 27 seconds to go in a tie game. Matry with a massive hit. It's a massive hit. I mean, Amezi catches the football and tucks it. And so you know, he's already he's making you know kind of multiple football moves to get into the end zone. Yeah. We have beautiful looks at it. Our crew is right on it, and I will be surprised if this one is not overturned. So here it is. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Oh. The play stands. So incomplete. Keith Roden, the replay official. So they see it differently. I just don't know how you can have a guy catch the football with his hands, tuck it into his body, and that not be considered a catch after he's got two feet on the ground and he's headed towards the end zone. What a big break. 
It's a huge break for NC State, but now you know, on third down here, I think you have to throw this ball into the end zone. Leary trying to stick it in. Tied 7-7. And whistles again. And a timeout, BC. Timeout, Boston College. Second of the half, 30 second timeout. So a timeout, some highlights of this drive by the Wolfpack. Well, it's been pretty impressive. It's the crossing routes that have been big on critical down and distances. That one on third down, and then good adjustment by Toodle, working for his quarterback, Leary, and run game starting to come alive as well as the guys up front get movement. And quite honestly, a call that I thought should have gone against NC State. Fortunate that that ball is, is ruled incomplete. And, you know, after a hot start with the touchdown, they have been struggling, kind of been living in third and longs. But this one pretty impressive, 14 plays. And still an opportunity, obviously, for a shot for a touchdown, but most certainly a chance to kick a field goal before the half. So once again, the pack will go with an empty backfield. Third down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Three wideouts to the right. Leary rolling to his left and dives down. Got back to the line of scrimmage. And that was it. Isaiah Graham Mobley with the hit. Well, it's a good job of coverage down the field, which makes Leary hold the football. Clock winding down. Dunn getting that one up there. And it was good. He did nail it. And NC State on the board again, 27 yards. Well, it's a good job of running on the field. Remember, out of timeouts, Leary doesn't get out of bounds. And it's a good kind of mayday situation by NC State for them to run the field goal team off. But Jeff Halfley, not happy about it. Still talking to the officials about, you know, potentially the, the fact that that ball wasn't ruled you know, a catch fumble, but he's still talking to the officials, which typically, you know, you don't have a coach talking to him that long. Yeah. Meanwhile, with the clock the winding down, NC State got a, a great job getting done on for a 27 yarder, and they have the lead. BC will get the ball to start the second half. Let's go down to Kelsey. Coach, for your offense to cash in there after that play was reviewed, what kind of momentum does it give you? Well, it was good to get that kick. We did a good job executing the Mayday field goal at the end. I'm proud of Chris. I hate that we didn't get a chance to throw it in the end zone right there. It's a good football game. Really good football game. Defensively, your team has come up with some big stops. What more do you need to see from them in the second half? Well, we need to stop the run. They've done a good job doing a bunch of different motions we didn't practice and pulling edge defenders out of the box. We need to go make some good adjustments right now. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Well, this team has been outstanding defensively all season long. And after this short break, Jordan. Eric, EJ, and Mark Rick will come your way. Things that went wrong, in my opinion, on the officials, and was number one was they should have treated it, as you mentioned, like a fumble. Yeah. And, and just in case it is a fumble, what if what if somebody would have scooped it up and scored, and it, the whistle would have blown? That'd have been bad. And then when they review it, I mean, what's the guy got to do? He caught the ball. He took at least two or three. Back right here, the ball should be a little bit more to the sideline. It's a little inside. Big time catch by five. Wayne Enterprises, business is booming. Very next play, pick a cold zone number for the three. Well, so Boston College, you know, hanging around. I think that that gives them confidence in life. They'll get the ball to start the half, obviously. And, uh, but I think both coaches probably pleased with some of the things they did and then also plenty of things to clean up as well. One of them for both teams would be staying out of so many third and longs. There were some damaging penalties as well. And one or two calls that were very questionable. You could say that's been balanced both ways so far after one half of football here at Chestnut Hill. Great to have you with us. NC State ranked number 22. Boston College unranked. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, and Kelsey Riggs. And so that's going to sail on through, and they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line a moment ago. Kelsey with Coach Halfley. Coach, 
Coach Hafley, I know you weren't super pleased with the way that half ended, but what did you say to your team about how you want to see them respond? I just told our team if they believe they were going to win in the beginning of this game, they should believe even more now. Our defense is playing well. We just got to tackle a little bit better. They haven't stopped us yet. We've stopped ourselves. I mean, this is an unbelievable atmosphere. The students showed up. The place is rocking. They're excited to play. I can't wait. Thanks, Coach. You got it. One thing he'd love to see is a few more catches because really Grossell's throwing the ball well. They've been a bunch of drops. Yeah, probably at least four drops by my count. And if you think about that, you know, he would be 12 of 15. Guys would have made the catches they should have. Now yeah, opening up the second half on the ground. It is Pat Garwell with the carry. Sevion Jackson stopped them one yard gain. Boston College four and one the Wolfpack of NC State at four and one both coming off a bye week. And Boston College trying to shake off that rather devastating loss at Death Valley when they had Clemson on the ropes second down and nine. Well that's a tough one to sit on for two weeks. Oh it, it, it is but I think the coaches did a good job of getting them off of it. Going to fire this one long and some contact there as it is broken up. Flowers, the intended receiver, and busted up by Pitts, who's really made some fine plays in the secondary. Yeah, Pitts has been a really nice player for them. Understands the system, does a good job of running with Zay Flowers, and because Grossell wasn't really able to follow through, you know, he wasn't able to leave lead Flowers across the field. You see the pressure on him there. Because that ball with with flowers running a post, you know, you want to lead him across the field more than Grossell did. Third and nine, little play action. He's going to roll away from the pressure and just loft that one out. There is a flag down on the play, and also a man down injured for NC State, and that is Tanner Engel, who is writhing in pain and holding defense. Number 24, 10 yard penalty, first down. They get pits for that. But again, Engel, who's such a key guy, that free safety, and in some pain. In some pain. It's a, a bad holding penalty by North Carolina State, and to make matters worse, an injury to one of their better defensive players, Tanner Engel. Ooh, collision there between players. Devil, the very tough free safety for the Wolfpack, Tanner Engel heading for the tent. You know, I said it earlier, human missile. He's such a big part of what they do defensively. Be a pretty significant loss if he can't return. After the penalty, first down 10. It's Garwal as he is strung out. And just a yard on that carry. Van with the stop, the nose tackle. They go back to the penalty, kind of distracted by the angle injury. And the reality is, Grossell's running for his life. Pitts didn't need to hold. He ends up holding, and it awards Boston College a first down. I mean, it's a big injury, but it's also a really significant penalty by Derek Pitts. Second down, 10 for the Eagles. And on the toss. Garlow tried to double back, which he's done several times tonight and made some yards after the initial contact. Not now. Jalen Scott stopped him cold. Jalen Scott is there, and it's a good job of running through by Drake Thomas, forcing Garwell back inside, and then just good pursuit by the Wolfpack defense. Third down and 10 for Dennis Grossell. Who had a 520 yard passing game last year against Virginia. So he can pile up yards assuming they're going to be caught. But the drops so far in this one has been a problem a completed pass here to Jalen Gill. And it's stacked up again in six yards. And again it's pits up to say hi. NC State just plays soft, keeping everything in front of them. Pitts does a nice job of wrapping up, making the tackle, and you know, now all of a sudden that penalty on the third and long makes up for it. Let's get on to Kelsey. 
Well, guys, Tanner Engel is still in the medical tent right now. It looked like he was limping on his right leg on his way in. I'm told that it is a quad bruise, and he is expected to return. So good news for this NC State defense. Very good news indeed. Thanks, Kels. And the punt is going to be fumbled. They dropped it. NC State scooping it up. And that is going to be Boykin. Boykin scoops it up, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown for the Wolfpack. A scoop and score for NC State. Mike Boykin has had a big night already. I was just about to say, Boykin has been outstanding, and Grant Carlson just drops the football. Nothing wrong with the snap. The protection's there, and Carlson just mis mishandles it. And then Boykin does a nice job of picking it up, staying on his feet, and we've seen two huge hits from Boykin. Great play in the back of the end zone, and then a scoop and score. And he's got the bone as well. Tony Gibson, defensive coordinator, bringing that out for tenacious, relentless defense. And when they recover a fumble or an interception, they get to sign that bone. They're going to see if he was down or not. They're going to take a look here. That looked like it was free. You never saw knee go down. Yeah, and Boykin, close. yeah, not yeah. even close. Off to the races. Yeah, I mean, he's not even close to being down. It's actually a great job because, you know, the instinct in the pile like that is to fall on it. He just scoops it up and you know, half of the Boston College punt team's covering a punt because it took a while for Carlson to kind of lose the football and then for it to be recovered. And you're right, how about Boykin? The night that he's had. Yep, the freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina, 5'10", a buck 85. He has broken up what looked to be a certain touchdown catch in the end zone by slapping it out of the hands of the tight end, Trey Barry, in the first half. Now he scoops up After the fumble and runs review, it in. The ruling on the field is confirmed. So a touchdown. He's a guy who came into the game with seven tackles on the season and has had three huge plays so far tonight. So done on for the extra point. He came in needing eight points to become NC State's all-time leading scorer. And a point after is good. Well, the Wolfpack finding some exciting ways to get on the board tonight. And this one, no different. Devin Boykin. By new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. The Boston College men's hockey team knocked off Northeastern last night 5-3. It was their home opener. 20 years ago, BC defeated North Dakota in overtime to win the NCAA National Championship in 01. Earlier tonight, they were honored right here at Alumni Stadium. It was the program's second of five national titles. Obviously an excellent hockey program. Brian Gianta right there in the middle, the, the hoodie. Long, decorated NHL career. Speaking of which, yeah, the Bruins are underway. Their season has started. Red Sox knocked off the Houston Astros in the ALCS game two in Houston. Won that handily, so game three will be at Fenway Park on Monday. This is a great place if you are a sports fan and you have a wide variety of choices, and Boston College is trying to be somewhere in that picture. And for much of this game, have been hanging in here with NC State, but really a bad sequence when you think about giving up three before the half and then a fumbled punt that turns into a score really put themselves in a hole. Now, great news for NC State. Tanner Engel is back. Receiver open and downfield. Got a flag on the play, but the catch is going to be made by Lucchetti, the tight end. A flag was dropped. 11.55 to go here in the third. I think it's going to be a hold on Jalen Scott, the linebacker, on Zay Flowers. Holding. Defense. Penalties decline. Results to the play. First out. 30 yards. It's a, you know, a play similar to the one they ran down in the end zone where Boykin was able to, to knock the football out. Just play action. Tight end to the corner. And really well thrown right over Tanner Engel who is back in the game after that thigh bruise. 
NC State getting a giant play. Devin Boykin, the freshman, strong safeties, had a great night already. Lining up to throw, Grossell has a receiver and overthrows Flowers, not by much. And nearly had a big strike there, but incomplete. The coverage by Harris. Yeah, I mean, you got to have the Zay Flowers going to end up running to the post, and they're clearing it out from the other side. We saw it earlier on a post. Does a good job of stemming him up, gets past the free safety. We saw it twice against Clemson, where Zay Flowers is running free, and they don't miss him. It's a long foul ball. You know, you, you need to let your receivers have an opportunity to get their hands on the football when they're wide open down the field, which Flowers was there. Second and 10 from the 45 of the pack. Garwo trying to run, stacked up. They found him quickly. Josh Harris, the defensive end, with the tackle, a two yard gain. You know, I think the thing that's surprising is Frank Signetti, offensive coordinator for BC, has done an amazing job of dialing up shots to get Zay Flowers the ball. I mean, Dave Dorans recognized Zay Flowers as a guy that he's just a really good football player. He's got a ton of speed. But if you're not getting him the ball down the field, then it almost doesn't matter. Third down eight for the Eagles. Time to throw, and that's broken up, and it's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Moore. Intercepted by the Wolfpack. Another Boston College turnover. And Moore, the junior from Chester, Virginia, who's had a terrific career, adds to it here. Yeah, good things happen when you run to the football. It's a slant, and the ball is high. And the coaching point, guys will say, hey, well, look, it touched his hands. He should get it. Catch it. And I'm sure that's what receiver coaches are saying. But when you have a guy running an in-breaking route, and he's reaching for the ball over his head, they don't typically catch those. In fact, those turn turn into tips and interceptions, and it's just great hustle to the football where good things happen for the Wolfpack defense. And another signature for the bone for the Wolfpack. And so now Leary trying to turn that into points. Has Knight in the backfield. He's going to throw instead short. Amezi trying to get away, getting to the 50-yard line. And dragged out by Elijah Jones. He's going to gain 12 and pick up the first, so they will move the sticks. And as he came in, two catches away from the all time record at the school for receptions. He's tied it now. And you know they're dying to get him that record. Well, and he'd rather tie it on one where he doesn't catch it and then fumble it. That's a better one to tie it on. And it's an impressive record when you consider. Some of the outstanding receivers that have played for NC State. We'll pack off the turnover. There he's going to get out of there, crossing the 50. He'll slide down. So that play breaking down. He'll gain one yard. And you know that that looks like a, oh hey that's a bad play, but that's a great play. It's first and ten. Your team's rolling. It's covered up. It's drop eight coverage. They're only rushing three. Instead of making a bad decision, take off run of the football, pick up one. So what? Like, big deal. Like, that's a great play by Devin Leary. And I think it's one of the things that Dave Dorn's been so happy about in terms of how he's managed the game so far this year. They are really, really fond of this kid. He's played under three different offensive coordinators and three different quarterback coaches. Here's Thomas. He can really run it, and he's chased out of bounds. A huge gainer, Maytree, chasing him down from behind. It picks up 23 yards. Yeah, and NC State is basically saying, look, we're going to force you out of playing press, man. We're going to run all these crossing routes. We're going to see if you can pass them off. And basically, they couldn't. You know, Thomas is running a shallow cross, and Brandon Sebastian gets picked off. It's a huge catch and run. Nice call by Tim Beck. Bam Knight, the running back. First down and 10. NC State pressing the matter on top 17 to 7. Under 850 to go here in the third at Boston College. Knight to run it. Bit of a hole that closed up, but he pushes and pushes for a little extra. And a three yard gain. And Isaiah Henderson stops him. So second down and seven. And in a game like this. 
it's kind of been, you know, yards have been tough to come by. You know, certainly scoring opportunities. You think about NC State you know, getting their scores by way of special teams and almost a miraculous catch. Just taking your time, you know, chipping away at it. As you see NC State kind of getting to less tempo offensively. Larry, the sophomore from New Jersey. Good pocket protection, but it's going to be dropped and broken up on the play. He wanted Tootle. He's caught a couple. Came in with just seven receptions, but two touchdown catches this season. And I've been impressed with Tootle. You know, tight end's kind of been a, you know, not necessarily featured in this offense recently, but he's a really athletic player, a good blocker, and he's done a nice job in the passing game. It doesn't hold on to that one. Yep, freshman, 6'4", 240. Third and seven. They put Rooks in motion. There he dumps it. It's Knight. Knight cutting back inside. Still on the feet. Still inside the five-yard line. Well, that was a determined run. Valdez finally stopped him, but he gains 17 as a little bit of rain begins to fall again. Yeah, it's a, a screen to the right as they get the big fellas out in space. And, you know, you mentioned a determined run. It was that good physical finish. So that'll bring a first and goal for the pack. And we'll see if Knight gets another touch right now. Coming up on seven minutes to go in the third. Leary fires for the end zone, and it will be a touchdown. Touchdown, NC State. Dylan Parham, the tight end. And shaken up on the play. The man who made the touchdown catch. And now they're going to say and incomplete. That play is under further review. They're going to take a look at it. Well, the signal was there for a touchdown. It gets twisted, and the ball does come free in the end zone. I mean, that's a touchdown catch. I don't think they have to look at this long. This is a touchdown catch. Parham catches it. Oh, He's yeah. down no question. in the end zone, and that ball comes out way after it's already a touchdown, and I think Part of the reason it comes out is, man, that that right leg kind of trapped underneath him as he gets pulled back. But there's no question that that's a touchdown for NC State. A good sign here is he is walking freely, makes the catch in the end zone, should be six. Leary with a dart. And right through the heart of the Eagles. I think that's a good way to describe it as a dart because it's an RPO. So he's faking the run and, you know, deciding not to give it to him. And he does a good job of changing his arm angle. He's got a little dart throw to pair him, yep. who obviously catches it. Obviously should be a touchdown. Under review, I'm not exactly sure why, but they are taking a lengthy look at this. Christopher Dunn already on, ready to attempt the point after here for the Wolfpack. And they are taking control of this football game. After further review, it's a catch and a touchdown. Touchdown NC State, no doubt about that. As they add to their lead here in the third quarter. And done on for the extra point, the third year starter. He will stick it. 24 to 7. Well, after a nice defensive stop and turnover by the Wolfpack, it's Devin Leary find a pair him in the end zone as the Wolfpack start to pull away. NC State grabbing this one by the throat, really doing a great job of taking advantage of the turnover to get into the end zone again. Yeah, it's just been amazing how they have just kind of taken control of this football game in a quick fashion with turnovers and then capitalizing 
on those turnovers. So he'll kick off. And this will come on out to the 25. There have been plenty of Boston College mistakes. Yeah, mistakes, or at least missed opportunities to say the least. But this ball probably should be caught by Barry. It's a nice play by Boykin. But the missed field goal is a mistake. The dropped punt is a mistake. And, you know, as I think you look at those things, the interception's a mistake as well. It's a bad throw that gets tipped. And so Boston College has opened the door, and to credit North Carolina State, they've capitalized on them. They sure have. They've walked through it. And into the end zone to make it 24 to 7. So a look of deep concern there on Halfley's face. As NC State looks to come out of the city of Boston tonight at 5 and 1. Throws sell time to do something about that. He gets the pass off to his tight end, Lucchetti. Big target at 6'5, 250. Dragged down by Isaiah Moore. That'll gain five. I think with Grossell, you know, BC is trying to do the things that he does well. Move the pocket plays, get the ball out quickly, not long developing plays. At the same time, you need to be able to attack all areas of the field with a weapon like Zay Flowers in your offense, trying to create opportunities for him down the field is something that has to be part of the plan. They've had a hard time finding him to do a lot of damage in the game. He doubles back right here. Levy. Straight ahead with that carry Travis Levy and Tanner Engel nice to see him back in the fray with the tackle. Pack by the way heading to Miami next Saturday. And on a handoff. That'll be Levy again and stop them. It's Jakeem Harris. They're going to have to punt it. Well BC tries to up tempo some and. Here comes the punt team tries to up tempo on third down and you know NC State just brings a bunch of people to the party because Zion Johnson was pulling he ends up getting a nice block I believe on Drake Thomas but it was Jakeen Harris and others that arrive at the football. So Grant Carlson to punt it a low and bouncing punt now I'm going to let that continue to roll. And right around the 21 46 yards as we take a look at our Bojangles big bow moment of tonight's game. Well let's not forget about you know a sports center top 10 that we will definitely see and that's Devin Carter. In the first drive for North Carolina State offensively just a great job of concentrating on an underthrown ball. Elijah Jones completely loses it and it's a one handed catch for Devin Carter on the back of Jones able to carry it into the end zone so no doubt a big moment for the big play wide receiver and now you see it now you don't yeah. Boston College clearly assuming the play was dead first down and 10 for the pack trying to continue the pressure here at BC person is going to be shoved back by Brandon Barlow the fifth year man who's 6 4 260. And nothing doing there as we approach the five minute mark of the third. And Chestnut Hill and Dennis Grossell trying to find some answers. Still has time here on his home turf. Still has time, but something needs to, to kind of flip the momentum for Boston College for them to fight back into it. I mean, you think six minutes left in the second quarter and it's a tie football game, and now all of a sudden. You know, just inside six minutes in the third, they're way behind. Rolling away from the pressure is Leary. Oh, tremendous catch and an opportunity for six here. Here's Thomas. Thomas down the side, and nobody's going to catch him. He is into the end zone for 79 yards and a touchdown. What a play by Drake Thomas. I mean, I think everyone's stunned. It's a crossing route that's happened that's kind of slow developing. Leary doesn't like what he sees, escapes out to the right. In fact, in fact, when I saw the ball come out of his hands, I thought it was going to be intercepted. And Thayer Thomas just basically says, all right, ball's in the air. I'm going to go get it. Two BC defenders run into each other. 
there, Thomas, who you know typically isn't the big play guy, with huge run after the catch for the score. How about this? Is the point is up, and it is good. Thayer Thomas was once drafted as an outfielder by the Boston Red Sox. Well, if they need someone to play center field, Dave, <laughs> I mean, look at Thomas, because this ball's thrown into a lot of traffic. It's great concentration. These guys end up running into each other, and then good speed. So this is what I mean. You're running crossing routes. They're trying to get a pick or a rub. It ends up being zone coverage, and it's Matry and Wood Bay. I mean, you can see why I thought it was going to be picked when it left his hands. Mm -hmm. Because Matry is, is, you know, he's really got the better angle to the football. But there, Thomas, just a good, good job of going up and almost intercepting it from Matry. Wow. Man, has this been impressive. As NC State in party mode already, 423 to go on the third on top, 31 to seven here on the road at Boston College against a very good football team and leading it 31 to seven on Monday night sure to catch the amazing documentary of the 1990 ACC football season the year that Virginia and Georgia Tech both spent time at number one they played an Epping game Yellow Jackets winning on a last second field goal that vaulted them into the top spot then at the end of the year saw them share the national title with Colorado. It's a one hour special premiering Monday at 7 on the ACC Network. Don't miss it. I'm excited to see that. And also excited to see Georgia Tech head to Virginia next week, a game that we will get to see live and in person. And we've seen Georgia Tech, saw them with an impressive win over North Carolina. And we've seen Brennan Armstrong throw it all over the field oh, this yeah. season. He's had some huge games. They can pile up points. On the strike, Lewis with the catch, but NC State has scored the last 24 points, and they have made BC's head spin. I mean, they have just jumped all over and taken advantage of every opportunity. And it's a little bit of what they did a week ago that came out on fire in the second half. Completed pass, got it off to Levy. So assuming they go on and win this football game and you know obviously we haven't even gotten to the end of the third quarter but the Wolfpack has been immensely impressive here in the second half it would be a really really sweet road victory should they pull this one out in the end We're gonna go airborne here and intended for flowers and the coverage there clean and no interference by battle clean and a great play by battle you know again another guy reading the eyes and hands of the receiver as the eyes get big and the hands go up battle doing a good job of sticking that hand in there and knocking it out and you know, Devin Leary telling the big fellas like hey way to go because we just had a bit of a explosion here Turns go out here. Yeah. fourth and short fourth and two for BC and keeping it on the ground and bowling ahead to pick up the first down. You know, selling the carry. It's getting late early to your point about, hey, look, we haven't gotten to the fourth quarter, but like this just flipped. This game flipped in a quick way. And, you know, Boston College is not, especially with Dennis Grossell, is not kind of structured to just be in the shotgun throwing it all over the field. They, they want balance. They want to be able to run the football and down 31-7 doesn't really cater to that. First and 10 under pressure. Rossell on the run looking for that stick. He steps out just short of that. He will gain eight yards on the play. But should they get it, it would be another victory for NC State that really demands respect. And their coaching staff and Dave Dorn will tell you more than the kids are getting. Dave said, I could give a lick about myself. I like being the underdog. I actually love being the underdog. But he, he feels like his kids are not getting, his players are not getting their due respect. 
And sometimes that's just coach speak to motivate your football team, but I, I believe it to be true. I think Dave Doran likes being kind of the underdog. I think he coaches that way. I think it's why he has a tough physical football team. Is there's a bit of a chip on his shoulder and his team's shoulder. But I also can agree with that. Look, like you beat Clemson, something that you know teams in this conference have not done for a long time. You're four and one, maybe five and one after going on the road and, yes. and playing a tough physical Boston College team. And look at this point running away with the football game. And, so, I, and I don't think it's just the victory over Clemson and everything yeah. inherent at that. It's the way they won that football game. It was an absolute thriller in double overtime. And a game they could have lost on multiple occasions. They pulled it out in the end. And you talk about a valuable win for your program. You can go and recruit immediately on that. Well, and it sounds like they have, and rightfully so, you know, in the state of North Carolina. Look, I... I think it's a great point by you, Dave, because the, the adversity that they faced in that game, it would have been easy to say, oh, well, here we go, it's Clemson. Mm -hmm. Here they go again, and, and they didn't. I'm bringing out the chains here. And just inches shy of a first down. And we have a minute and 46 seconds left in the third. 31 to 7 NC State just grabbing hold of this one. Now some light rain again here in Boston. When BC went with a quarterback sneak on the last fourth down and really got a ton of movement. Had no problem getting it. Would surprise me if they didn't just go back to it. Grossell on the center flags down as he went ahead. The flags falling. With a minute 42 to go in the third. This, by the way, would be Dave Doran's 60th victory at NC State. Should he pull it out tonight? Delay of game, defense, number one. Disconcerting signals. Five yard penalty. That foul will result in a first down. Yeah, basically Isaiah Moore, you look at him, maybe making it sound like he's simulating a snap count. And to be honest with you, from that look behind, that's a play that's not called, but the officials seem pretty sure about it with the way they're talking yeah. to Isaiah Moore. Jumped all over it. That results in a first down. First and 10, right in midfield. They'll throw short and a big hit there, and incomplete. And once again, Moore, who has been a terror, 6'2", 235 pound junior. I think taking out some of the aggression from the penalty yes on levy <laughs> talk, it's coming talk across the middle a, a disconcerting hit yeah yeah right yes <laughs> big time second down 10 and another incompletion intended for barry and, and the rain's coming down right now we've seen a couple of these we saw it on the slant that was intercepted we saw it on you know, that throw to Levy, that throw to Barry. And Dennis Grossell has just been inaccurate. The football in these conditions, and it's been a challenge. Well, it's been in the forecast all week, so you know, teams were going through their drills with a wet football. And a lot of teams don't want to overdo that. You don't want to put it in anybody's head that, oh, this might be a huge problem come Saturday night. But you do want to be ready for it. Grossell back. Time to throw. And incomplete once again. Just can't get it done with a passing game intended for Galloway, the wide receiver. And again, you know, it's these conditions, the way the team is structured to be, you know, throw, throw, throw with, you know, coverage on the back end by North Carolina State expecting it is not how BC is structured. And, you know, Dave, back to your point about practicing with a wet ball. You're right, you don't want to overdo it. You know, the other aspect of it is some guys just aren't good at throwing a wet ball. That'll roll on into the end zone. 49 yard kick. It hasn't been what you'd call a huge nuisance tonight, at least not yet. I don't want to tempt fate here. But this has been in the forecast. In fact, 
Some are anticipating a real heavy shower at some point tonight. We have not seen that, thankfully. 116 left in the third, and all Wolfpack here leading 31 to 7. You know, I, I would have actually preferred a soaking wet football than a ball that's like just kind of wet. Really? Oh, uh, yeah, because you know you're getting a, a just a, a wet, heavy ball if it's just pouring rain. But if it's like rain all day, hey, they've dried it with a towel. Oh, but wait, no, it is really wet. Like, I, I always hated that. Flag down. Ball start. Offense, number eight, five-yard penalty, first down. That's on a running back person. Brings up first down and 15. You, know, you made a great point about Dave Dorn a couple of weeks ago about he's got 21 players who have been drafted into the NFL since he has taken over this program. And he's done an amazing job of taking recruits who might come in at one position, plays them a while, lets some of those guys see the light, he switches them to another position, which they then excel at, and boom, they're off to the races. He's done it often in his career. He, he's done it often. Guys have turned into great players, and you know, maybe it's his own personal experience. He's a guy that, you know, has been a tight end. He played linebacker, and so you get moved around. You understand what that feeling is like, and, you know, I think he's also got a nice way about him, too, where he kind of put his arm around the guy and be like, look, you know, playing is better than watching, and yes. moving to this <laughs> position may end up helping our football team in you, and guys have bought in and had really nice careers at positions they weren't necessarily yeah. recruited to play. You're right. Dave gets them to buy in. Second down, 15. Hand up once again, person. Trying to scoot inside and stacked up staying on his feet for quite a while a four yard gain. And the final seconds tip ticking away here in the third. NC State capitalizing on turnovers playing stout defense making big plays here in the second half. And Leary leading them. That'll be the end of the third here at B.C. We are on to the fourth quarter. And the Wolfpack enjoying life here in the Northeast tonight. Rain or not, leading at 31-7 after three. Played with a 21-point third quarter explosion. They lead at 31-7. Be sure to stick around after the game for the huddle. Jordan, Eric, EJ, and Mark will join you for a complete breakdown of all the ACC games today. That's tonight after we wrap things up on the ACC Network and also the ESPN app. So the Wolfpack with the football. And that means Leary back to work. He's going to rifle another pass to the near sideline and caught by Rooks. And ahead for a couple of more, he'll gain eight. So we are underway here in the fourth. And all Wolfpack here at Boston College. Really has been, and it's been an impressive you know, response to what was a really physical, tight football game. And Dave Dorn, you know, at halftime talking about, look, it's a really good football game. It's tight, it's, it, it's physical. And then you said it, explosion. That's the right word because that's what happened. Hill gets the wobbly punt up high. Levy will let that bounce. Now keep on rolling. And right around the 20-yard line for 52 yards, that kick. Take a look at tonight's running back spotlight brought to you by Arby's. Well, Pat Garwo got off to a really impressive first half. I mean, we saw the first half, big runs, nearly 50 yards, and averaging nearly seven yards per carry. But the second half has been a completely different story. Dave Doran talked about at halftime that there were some motions that removed some of their edge defenders from the run game. Clearly, the adjustment has been made in the second half, and it's really held the BC run game in check. Garwell, the sophomore out of Pennsylvania, on the sideline at the moment. They bring on Alex Sinkfield as the running back. First and 10, BC beginning this drive, trying to make some points out of it. And Grossell wants to throw, stepping up in the pocket. And completed to Gill. 
Gill with a rolling catch for 19 yards. PC's going to have to go tempo. And I think they're actually better off kind of running something similar to their offense. We saw a hard play action on first down there. Do that stuff rather than getting in the shotgun and doing other things. Save Flowers and scooting up across the 40 yard line with a stop by Isaiah Moore. He's made a lot of them again tonight. That's a three yard gain. Yeah, Isaiah Moore has, has really been all over the field. And you know, NC State loved their linebackers coming into the season. Obviously, the Peyton Wilson injury was rough. Big time pressure thrown up for grabs and almost picked off. And that was Devin Boykin who got a hand on that pass. Who's had a tremendous night. And Grissel gets blasted again by Isaiah Moore. Who's been all over the field. Good clean hit on Grossell. And you know, once again trying to find Zay Flowers down the field. But it's not anywhere where he can go make a play on it. Look he's fast. He also does a nice job of going up and fighting for the football. But NC State defense has done an excellent job of rushing growth cell on some of those throws down the field working with an empty backfield here and now comes Travis Levy on third down six he's running and he's going to be tackled and another play by Conte there those tackle and that's going to lose four yards for BC that's yeah, Conte you know coming this side and he just beats Conley who's in for Tyler Vrabel at left tackle. It's a good job of winning with his hands and turning the corner and enough speed to run Grossell down. Now fourth down 10, keeping the offense on the field here and the rain coming harder. It's the hardest, certainly it has rained the entire evening. Here in Boston. 12.35 to go in the contest. Grossell, time to throw this time. Dumps that one over the middle and got it close. Johnson able to make the catch. He's going to pick up nine yards. We're going to be short of the first down at 12:25 remaining. Austin College's NC State has a big lead, but look who is sticking it out. It is the 30-plus family members from. NC State quarterback Devin Leary lives not too far away in New Jersey as you see them with a little trickeration here. Um, his family was really excited to come down you guys as I said lives not too far away and this is a guy that means a whole lot to this NC State program. They call him Jersey Strong. We know what he went through last year coming back from that devastating knee injury and being able to battle back and be with this team this year. His family probably feels like it's pretty Jersey strong too, sitting out here in this rain, guys. I can tell you, it's not coming down lightly. No, it's really picked up in the last 10 minutes, Kels. Like we have to tell you, <laughs> you're standing in it. We're in the booth. We're covered. We're fine. But you know, hey, you travel 330 miles, pay for the tickets. You're going to stick it out. Uh, and not surprised he has so many people showing up. And three games coming into this contest, and then the game tonight. He's thrown 12 touchdowns in zero interceptions. And Devin Leary has been balling. He's been playing great. Obviously, some help from Devin Carter on the first one, but a good job of changing his arm angle and the one to farm, and then finding Thayer Thomas does an excellent job adjusting to the football. But Devin Leary has managed the game well. He's made enough big plays and. I thought it was interesting to hear Dave Doran say, you know, in that Clemson game, he had eight throwaways. And, you know, those don't make the Sports Center top 10. But what they do do is help you, you know, from being in a bad situation defensively. And he's played great. Block in the back here, penalty. And by the way, his brother, Donovan, also a standout quarterback there in New Jersey, same high school. And he's committed to Illinois. So outstanding quarterback play. That's a family matter. He's going to reverse it and slide down. And as we approach 11 minutes to go here at rainy Boston College. But the Wolfpack could care less. They are cruising here. 
man, did this game flip on its head in about five minutes, it fell like. Well, speaking of things on your head, <laughs> I'm, what about that umbrella? Yeah, it did. It absolutely did. I mean, we were really, uh, uh, you know, nearly at 7-7 seven, seven going into halftime. It's 10-7 going into halftime, and you think, all right, Boston College is going to get the football back, and then that fumble punt just opened the floodgate. Third down 17 for the pack. And Knight with a carry again finds a hole across the 50 still churning ahead. So tough to drag down on that first hit. He'll get seven of those back. And stopped by Josh DeBerry. That cornerback for BC. And an injured player for Boston College. That is Valdez. And he's upset. Marcus Valdez. That's a huge guy. In terms of value to the BC defense, the uh, defensive end, 260 pound grad. So Gill back to punt. And Levy looking for the fair catch. Be first down and 10 here for Boston College, trailing 31 to 7. Yes, what I'm saying is brought to you by Sport Clips. Well, and it's Isaiah Moore. He has been absolutely everywhere. Described to us as the heartbeat of the Wolfpack defense. And I mean, quarterback hits, interceptions, tackle for loss, the bone. He's had it all tonight. One of the best in the ACC, and he gives no quarter. Every play is like life and death for him. Levy takes a pretty good hit. And for more on him, let's toss it down to Kelsey. Well, I got to talk with one of the guys who plays right beside him, and that's Drake Thomas, about what Isaiah Moore not only means to this team, but means to him. He classified him as a great leader, said he's vocal, and he said he's learned so much from playing alongside Isaiah that he could never thank him enough. Another guy he really leaned on, of course, was Peyton Wilson, no longer with them. But these guys are all very close. Well, first down here for Boston College, a completed pass to Jalen Gill for 18 yards. Yeah, we saw it, NC State at the start of the season, and with Payson, Peyton Wilson. So you went Peyton Wilson, Isaiah Moore, Drake Thomas. Maybe hard to find a better linebacking crew in the ACC, maybe even college football. Obviously, no Peyton Wilson's a big loss. And Grossell will go down again, sacked on the play by Vi Jones. Guy who blocked three kicks last year. That'll cost him five yards. Well, he's another guy. Levi Jones, Vi Jones, another guy. Kelsey Riggs is certainly an MVP as well for us, always. <laughs> Riggsy, as we like to call her. Another one darted in there and a completed pass to Galloway. Just keeps on trucking, you know. Guys. I'm just I'm having a really good time down here in the rain. Can you tell? How are you guys doing out there driving? Kelsey, you look like you're having the time of your life. I'm so happy. Can, she's saying, can someone just get me a towel for crying out loud? I wore these leather pants to see if the, the rain would fall right <laughs> off of them. I've got this rain jacket. All my papers are sticking together. Things are really good. I'm happy. We're here, guys. You know, it, it's, a, it's a good day. Now, Tim and I rarely complain about what we wear in weather. You're in a different category and certainly the best of luck to you. Yeah, uh, if you guys, you know, I think we have a little bit of time. I'm happy to run up to the booth really quick and tag one of you guys in if you want to switch places for the last seven I'd minutes. I'd love to, but we're running short on time. <laughs> Kels, thank you very much. And off the fingertips of Isaiah Moore. Nearly had another pick here. This is almost an outstanding play by Isaiah Moore. I mean, it was an outstanding play, but almost an outstanding interception. That comes out of nowhere. Almost able to grab that one. And let's be honest, Kelsey's down in the rain, Dave, not complaining. You were saying it was a little a little too muggy in the booth. You, I did, I actually. You, 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 you were like requesting like two degrees yeah. different. There was the a, a point here, this is a good sign. Looks like it's starting to break up, but there was a torrential rain about an hour ago, and I was complaining about how muggy it was, <laughs> which I'm not proud of that moment at all. Rosell will fire downfield, broken up, almost picked off again, but it falls incomplete. Intended for Lewis Bond, the wide receiver. You know, just seeing some of these guys out here now, up 31 to 7. 
Isaiah Moore, Tyler Baker Williams right there on the play. You know, they, they got some playmakers defensively. You know, not necessarily any super superstars on their defense, but guys that play well together, a veteran group, and, you know, kind of everyone just doing their role well. Well, there's no question about that. And they've been at the very top statistically in the ACC all season long. Completes a bond. He'll make the catch. Right around midfield here for BC. And a stop by Tyler Baker Williams, but a seven yard gain. As we approach seven minutes to go, fourth down and four. And Grossell soaked himself. We'll fire that one down into the turf. That got away just a bit. 6.58 to go. NC State leading it 31 to 7 here at BC. For everyone from players to parents, football offers unlimited growth with even more to learn. Under seven minutes to go, what's turned into a blowout for the Wolfpack. And Leary staying in. Jordan Houston also getting the opportunity to maybe handle the ball a little bit. Quarterback will be taken down around a 40. I should say it's Houston. And De Palma with the tackle on Houston. You know, what's interesting is we've seen so much Ricky Person and Bam Knight, but Jordan Houston as a young player, a really exciting player. Different style of back, more of a speed player, but good in the passing game as a receiver, move him around, jet sweep. We haven't seen a ton of him, but I think it's mainly because you know, they're so happy with with person and Bam Knight, but they have a stable of backs. First and 10 from the 40. Mezzi will haul that one in the stop by DeBerry, but that is the school record for receptions. He is number one all time now at NC State. And this seems like it was done intentionally for the record, which for the record, I absolutely love guy who's been a great player 203 career receptions you just think of guys corn Robinson Tory Holt uh, guys that have been just incredible wide receivers that have come through this program yep and now Impressive. steps out with the record he took advantage of that extra year granted by the NCAA due to the pandemic and that's paid off as for a lot of guys Houston another carry and congratulations, getting a lot of love from his teammates, very popular guy. He is, and you know, he was a good player right when he came to NC State. And then he kind of got injured, and I think he struggled with some confidence. And, you know, wasn't the player, I think, for part of his career that he expected to be. And it was interesting talking to the coaches at the start of the season, saying, as you see him smiling, it's just good to see him smiling again having fun being confident because he is a very good player when he's playing with confidence native of north carolina came in as their top guy and it's houston on the carry he'll dive ahead and pick up five yards jordan houston sophomore so nc state just about four and a half minutes away from going to five and one on the season. This is obviously a very important win. They're coming off a of bye week. They're heading to Miami next. And I would think that that's a game that they feel pretty good about with what we've seen from Miami. And it isn't until November 13th that they would go to Wake Forest. Obviously play a, a rolling Wake Forest team, but I, I think North Carolina State. Timeout, NC State, first of this half. With 3.52 to go, Messi with the career catch here tonight. He has the record, record at NC State. You know, passing a very good player in Jalen Samuels, a guy who's a running back tight end type player that you know, caught a lot of balls right around the line of scrimmage. And what Amezi has done is much more of his work down the field. 
Some love from his teammates and rightfully deserved. So we'll back to punt here. End over end. And they will let that bounce and well done right at the one yard line. It's been quite a month for NC State going back to that great win over Clemson. For the win. He missed it. Pulled it left again. Has tons of time into the end zone. Caught. DJ into the end zone. Incomplete. NC State rides on the strength of the pass. And going to be tackled in the end zone. A safety. And a great defensive stops continue for the Wolfpack as they add on a couple of more points. 33-7. I mean, that victory is the kind of win that will stick for a long, long time, not just in a season, but for that program. Oh, absolutely for the program because, you know, what it did was kind of just brought to light kind of just put North Carolina State, you know, at a level and a, you know, being able to do something that teams in the conference hadn't been able to do. It was like it, it validated a lot of what Dave Doran has been building on. And, you know, I've talked a lot about when we've had NC State games and how impressed I've been by the talent that's been on the teams that, that we've covered. You know, guys that go play in the pros and I think that they do a really nice job of developing players to get them prepared to go play at the next level. But a win like that against a, a team in your area was so significant with the success that they had. And I think that's why they, as Dave Doran said, they all really enjoyed the win for a while. Yeah, see, an emphasis on that. That meant everybody in town, but also the coaching staff, Every player, all the parents, everyone related to every player. Yeah. And, you know, even when he did the post-game interview, and then beyond that, smoking that cigar, <laughs> why not? You think it, it, the Red Solo Cup? And <laughs> I think, I, he said the bye week, you know, it, well, first off, he said he was more nervous for Louisiana Tech than he was Clemson because... I think they were having a lot of fun. And so I think recovering and getting ready for the Louisiana Tech game uh, was a was maybe a bit of a task. Yes. I think they were emotionally drained uh, after. He said they really could have used the bye week then more I'm than. I'm sure they could have. Me. Well, the new quarterback is going to be Ben Finley, who is the brother of Ryan, of course, who started NC State, drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals. You got a handoff for Houston, finds some open room to run as he goes off to the sideline. Had a flag down, but a nice gain here of 16 yards by Jordan Houston. You can see why well, Jordan Houston, we've seen holding by the offense, number 84, 10 yard penalty, first down. You know, Jordan Houston's a guy that they used to sprinkle in a little bit. I mean, he's got so much quickness, and kind of just giddy up that it's a nice little change of pace with their other backs. Yeah. This kind of goes back to the point about talent here, though, Dave, right? Yeah. I mean, just back after back after back. And you know, Ryan Finley, who, as you mentioned, or excuse me, Ben Finley, Ryan's younger brother, was a highly recruited player out of Arizona and played some as a true freshman. And there's definitely some upside with him at the position as well. Ryan Finley, number two all-time in passing yards at NC State. And he'll take it again. Houston with another carry. We talk about Leary being so steady, and he just doesn't make mistakes. And he has a very talented wide receiver room. We saw one of the great catches you will see in the ACC all year tonight by Devin Carter with that incredible grab. Drawing the football around the back and the side of his defender and racing into the end zone. And frankly, Boston College was dumbfounded. 
So oh, were we. Elijah Jones, you know, I think thought the ball was incomplete. And so, you know, and then you have another, you know, opposite him, you've got a receiver that's, you know, has 203 career receptions. Got a guy that plays in the slot that been drafted by the Red Sox and made a great play tonight. This was some catch. It really was. And <laughs> Amazing concentration, as you pointed out. You almost think that Elijah Jones thought that, okay, I felt it hit my back. It must have fallen to the ground. Must have hit the ground, yeah, right. Must have hit the ground. And he can be forgiven for that because uh, you don't just think, you don't think that ball is going to be caught and run into the end zone. No, you you don't at all. And But it was, and what a great play. And you know, these receivers are impressive. You know, Carter 6'3", 216. Amezi 6'3", 212. Big physical players and first down. And the clock running down to 132. NC State piling up 21 points in the third quarter. So if for some reason you left the game just at the point where they ripped off the 21 and ran away and hit in this game. You'd be shocked that it's 33 to 7 because it actually was a very competitive game to that point. I mean, Dave Dorn at halftime, and you know, I think NC State caught a break going into the half with a, a call that went in their favor. They're up three, but they're up three with the great catch by Carter is their lone touchdown and, and fortunate to get the three at the end of the half. So really, in some ways, Boston College had done a, a nice job on them defensively. But turnovers, both in the kicking game and then you know throwing the football, proved to be way too much. Yeah, really a complete effort by the Wolfpack, including right as the clock of the first half was running out, they got the kicking unit on. And as that clock was running down, kicked the 27-yard field goal. It's a great point. It's a mayday, you know, situation. And after Leary went down in bounds with no timeouts left, did a good job. So that'll do it. Leary and company, an impressive win. And number 60 at NC State for Dave Doran. They run away and hide in the second half and win this 33-7. to Yeah, impressive job pulling away and and into the win column number five for NC State dropping Boston College to four and two second consecutive loss for the Eagles so they have a lot of work to do to get back to where they were just a few weeks ago NC State is rolling though they're rolling you said a five and one and look I think they're a good enough football team to win every game the rest of the way I may do it. Let's go to Kelsey with Dave Doran. Coach Doran, this looked like a completely different second half. Quarter got some takeaways. The pump block was a huge spark. It was an awesome play by the guys. I thought we really played a good game. Defensively, this team was really, really stout. Only gave up seven points in this entire game. What impressed you the most about their performance? You know, a lot of guys played. I thought we won the line of scrimmage in the second half. The guys tackled better in the second half, played hard, got a lot of grit. It's an awesome team, man. I got to give the glory to God and uh, shout out to my beautiful wife, Sarah, back home. You just uh, have a guy behind you who just set the career receptions record for this program. What has Emeka Mezzi meant to NC State? It's a big deal. I mean, it's such a big deal for him to come back and give us what he has and proud of him. He's earned it. I know he's going to stay humble and just keep making plays for us. And then, Coach, <laughs> Coach, finally, before I let you go, you talked a lot about respect that you want this team to have. What does a win like this on the road hopefully say about this team? You know, I can only control what I control. I hope people will notice they're not picking us and we're going to keep winning, so keep hating on us, I guess, you know. It's a great team. We're just going to keep going one week at a time, and our record will show where we belong. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Go Pack. I think people are going to be listening to him more and more. They really should. I think they have to. It's a good football team.